こんにちは、ローズです。Welcome back!In this video, we will learn new Japanese grammar from the Minano Nihongo textbook lesson 18.Here, we will learn about verb in dictionary form.If you're ready, 始めましょう。Here are the grammar points that we would learn in this lesson.The first one is how to modify verbs from mass Form to dictionary form. Dictionary form is also known as the basic or plain form of the verb. It is called dictionary form because this is how verbs are written in the Japanese dictionary. So, for example, you encounter or hear a new word and you want to know its meaning, you go to the dictionary and search for it. For example, the word irimas. So, if you want to know what it means, you need to know what it is in the dictionary form. That's why it is important to know how to modify verbs from mass to dictionary form. For group 1, we simply change the syllable before mass, which are in the e line, to u line. For example, araimas. The e syllable will become u, and we will remove mass. So, araimas becomes Arau. Hikimas becomes hiku. Utaimas becomes utau. Hanashimas becomes hanasu. Oyogimas becomes oyogu. Yomimas becomes yomu. Torimas becomes toru. Takimas becomes kaku. Kaimas becomes kao. Ikimas becomes iku. For group 2, we just change mas to ru. For example, dekimas becomes dekiru. Atsumemas, atsumeru. Sutemas, steru. Kaemas, kaeru. Abimas, abiru. Tabemas, taberu. Yamemas, yameru. Oboemas, oboeru. And for verbs in group 3, we have shimas and kimas. Shimas becomes suru and kimas becomes kuru. Other examples of group 3 verbs are unten shimas, which becomes unten suru because we just change shimas to suru. Yoyaku shimas becomes yoyaku suru. Kengaku shimas becomes kengaku suru. Benkyo shimas becomes benkyo suru. Kekkon shimas becomes kekkon suru. For the meaning of these verbs, make sure to check out the vocabulary list for this lesson. Next is how to express can or able to do something. We use the dictionary form of the verb followed by koto. Koto means thing. So by adding koto to the dictionary form of the verb, we are essentially changing verb into a noun or in English a gerund. So if we want to say can or able to do a verb, We say, verb dictionary form koto ga dekimas. Dekimas means can or able to. For example, Lily can sing. Our topic is Lily. So, Lily san wa, our verb is to sing, which is otaimas. In dictionary form, it is utau koto. So, utau koto means singing. So, now our verb becomes a noun. Lili san wa utau koto ga dekimas. So, literally, this means that Lily is capable of singing. Another example Adam can swim. So, our topic is Adam. Adam san wa, our verb is. Swim, which is 
oyogimas. In dictionary form, it is oyogu. Followed by koto ga dekimas. Adamu san wa oyogu koto ga dekimas. Adam can swim, or literally, it means Adam is capable of swimming. Natalie can read kanji. Natari san wa. So here we have an object for the action read. Kanji o. Read is yomimas. Dictionary form is yomu. Followed by koto ga dekimas. Natari san wa kanji o yomu koto ga dekimas. And another example, I was able to reserve tickets online. Watashi wa online de. Our object is tickets. Chiketto. And our verb is to reserve, which is yoyaku shimas, which becomes yoyaku suru. So again, shimas becomes suru. Yoyaku suru. Followed by koto ga dekimashita. Because this is in the past form. Online de chiketto wo yoyaku suru koto ga dekimashita. We can also express being able to do something by using nouns. Using the following pattern, noun ga dekimas. But we cannot just use any noun. So usually we will use nouns that can act as a verb by just adding suru or shimas. So suru is the dictionary form and shimas is the mas form. So this means to do or to play. So for example, we have tenisu. So this is the noun. If we want to make these words into a verb, we just add o suru or sometimes we remove o and just say nani nani suru or nani nani shimas. For example, tennis o shimas to play tennis. Golf o shimas to play golf. Saka o shimas to play soccer and so on. So as you can see, we can use nouns that denotes an action. So like sports, dancing, ryori is cooking, shokuji is eating, benkyo is studying, ryoko is traveling. So other nouns that we could use in this pattern are those associated with the verb hikimas, which is to play a stringed instrument or to play a piano. So here we can use the noun gita. And also nouns associated with the verb hanasu or hanashimas, meaning to speak a language. So in this example, nihongo hanashimas. So our noun is nihongo. So let's see some examples using this pattern. I can play golf. So like I said, you can use sports. Watashi wa golfu ga dekimasu. So we don't have to put the verb play. Watashi wa golfu ga dekimasu. So here, this literally means I can golf, but it is already understood that you mean I can play golf. My husband can cook really well. Otto wa, and our noun is cooking, which is ryori ga, and our adverb really well, which is jōzu ni. And then lastly, Dekimas. Otto wa ryori ga jōzu ni dekimas, or otto wa ryori ga dekimas. My husband can cook. Another example is I can play the piano. Here we have the musical instrument, which is associated with the verb hikimas. So we say watashi wa piano. 
So our noun is piano, followed by ga dekimasu. So again, this literally means I can piano, but it's already understood that you mean I can play the piano. Lastly, I can speak Portuguese. Watashi wa, our noun is Portuguese. Portugaru go ga dekimasu. Watashi wa Portugaru go ga dekimasu. We can also ask questions using this pattern by just adding ta at the end. So, can you or are you capable of? For example, can you drive? Anata wa, our verb is to drive, which is unten shimasu. In dictionary form, it's unten suru, followed by koto ga dekimasu ka? Anata wa unten suru koto ga dekimasu ka? We can also use the noun ga dekimasu ka pattern. Unten ga dekimasu ka? So here we just removed suru or shimas and just use the noun which is driving. Unten ga dekimasu ka? Literally means are you capable of driving? So we can answer, for example, hai. Unten ga dekimasu. Yes, I can drive. Or ie unten ga dekimasen. No, I can't drive. Another example, were you able to study yesterday? Kino wa or kino. So I just added the wa here to emphasize that I'm talking about yesterday. As for yesterday, were you able to study? Kino wa. Our verb is study. Ben kyo. So here I'm using Noun, benkyo ga dekimashita ka? Because I am talking about the past. Dekimashita ka? Were you able to? Kino wa benkyo ga dekimashita ka? Of course, you can make this into benkyo suru koto ga dekimashita ka? Which is more formal. Hai, dekimashita. Yes, I was able to. Yes, I did. Iye. For example, jikan ga arimasen deshita kara dekinakatta desu. No, I wasn't able to because I didn't have time. Another example, can I change my yen bills to dollars at the airport? Watashi wa kūkou de at the airport. En o doru ni. So, en, o, so yen, doru ni, two dollars. Our verb is change, which is kaemas, which becomes kaeru, followed by koto ga dekimasu ka? Kukou de en o doru ni kaeru koto ga dekimasu ka? For example, someone might say, Hai, dekimasu yo. Another example, how many meters can you swim? So here I am using an interrogative question, how many? Anata wa nan metoru, so nan, what? Meter, which translates to how many meters? Nan metoru oyogu koto ga dekimasu ka? Anata wa nan metoru oyogu koto ga dekimasu ka? For example, 50 meters gurai oyogu koto ga dekimasu. What language can you speak? Again, I'm using an interrogative question, what? What language? Anata wa nani go o hanasu koto ga dekimasu ka? Anata wa nani go hanasu koto ga dekimasu ka? For example, Portugal go ga dekimasu. 
Next is talking about your hobby. So one of the common questions that you might get asked is about your hobby. So people might ask you, what's your hobby? Or, shumi wa nan desu ka? You can answer by, shumi wa noun or verb dictionary desu. Or the complete sentence is, my hobby is blank. My hobby is fishing. Watashi no shumi wa. So this is, my hobby is, and our noun is fishing, which is suri. So this is using the shumi wa noun des pattern. So, watashi no shumi wa suri des. If you want to use the dictionary form, you can say, watashi no shumi wa tsuri o suru koto desu. But it's not necessary. You can just say, suri desu. Another example, my hobby is playing computer games or my hobby is computer games. Watashi no shumi wa computer game desu. Or, watashi no shumi wa computer game o suru koto desu. So again, the difference is that Surukoto des is more formal than this pattern, but they both mean the same thing. Another example, my hobby is photography or taking pictures. Watashi no shumi wa shashin o toru koto. So, sashin pictures o toru, take. By adding koto, this becomes a noun, so it becomes taking pictures. This. Shumi wa shashin o toru koto desu. My hobby is collecting action figures. Watashi no shumi wa action figure o atsumeru koto desu. Watashi no shumi wa action figure o atsumeru koto desu. So in examples 3 and 4, we are using verbs just to be more specific about our hobby because if we just say watashi no shumi wa sashin desu so it's not very clear what do you mean by sashin because it's very vague if you just my hobby is pictures or my hobby is action figures but i guess you can still say shumi wa action figure desu but um it's more specific if you add like a verb into it like atsumeru to collect action figures because you could be like making action figures so that's different shumi wa action figure o sukuru koto desu so that's why sometimes you need to add verbs in the sentence okay next one is mai ni so verb one in dictionary form mai ni verb two so mae, if you remember, means in front or before. And ni is the particle to mark the location. So this means before verb, verb to. For example, I'll take a shower before going to bed. So our verb one is going to bed. And we will change that into dictionary form, which is Neru. So, neru means to sleep or to go to bed. So, neru mai ni, before going to bed, I'll take a shower or I take a shower, which is shawa o abimasu. Watashi wa neru mai ni shawa o abimasu. Please wash your hands before eating. Taberu mai ni. So our verb is eating or to eat. So here we change it to dictionary form, which from tabemas becomes taberu. Taberu mai ni, please wash your hands. Teo aratte kudasai. So our verb is wash, which means araimas. So because we are asking someone to do something, we want to add te kudasai. Taberu mai ni, 
手を洗ってください。Before I go to school, I walk the dog. So our verb is go to school. 学校へ行く前に犬の散歩をします。学校へ行く前に犬の散歩をします。And we can also ask questions using this pattern. For example, what do you do before a verb? For example, what do you do before going to bed? 寝る前に何をしますか寝る前に何をしますか If you notice, verb to can be present form or it could be to ask someone to do something and so on. We can also use noun using this pattern. So, noun no mai ni verb. So, if you remember in lesson 10, we've encountered this pattern when we want to identify the location of the object. But this time, the meaning is different. Noun no mai ni verb. Before noun, verb. So, again, the nouns here should imply an action. So, it cannot be just any noun. For example, before the trip, I will confirm my hotel reservation. So, if you remember, to travel is ryoko shimas. So, we can just remove shimas and just use ryoko, which is trip, which is a noun. Ryoko no mai ni. Before the trip, Confirm my hotel reservation. So our object is hotel reservation. Hotel no yoyaku wo. So hotel reservation. Kakunin shimas. Confirm. Ryoko no mai ni hotel no yoyaku wo kakunin shimas. Another example I pray before meal. Meal is shokuji. So we can use this as a verb by adding suru. Sokuji shimas eating. So here we are just using the noun part. Shokuji no mai ni pray is inori o shimas. Shokuji no mai ni inori o shimas. Before the meeting, Please make a copy of this document. Our noun is meeting. Kaigi no mai ni. This document is kono shirio o. Please make a copy. Kopi shite kudasai. Kaigi no mai ni kono shirio o kopi shite kudasai. We can also use this pattern using a period of time followed by mai ni verb. But this time mai ni means ago. Period of time ago did verb. For example, I came to America 10 years ago. Watashi wa 10 nen mai ni. アメリカに来ました10年前に10 years ago came to America アメリカに来ました I resigned from the company 6 months ago6 ヶ月前に会社を辞めました6ヶ月前に会社を辞めました。I took the medicine 30 minutes ago. 薬は30分前に飲みました。Of course, you can say 30分前に薬を飲みました。Here, I just use another pattern wherein I make the object as a topic. By 
replacing o with wa, which we learned in the previous lessons. Kusuri wa sanjupun mai ni nomimashita. Or, sanjupun mai ni kusuri o nomimashita. Okay, next is the word nakanaka. Nakanaka means fairly, quiet, or pretty with positive sentences. So, it's in between very or totemo and zenzen, not at all. So, it's just right in the middle. The cake tastes pretty good. Keiki wa nakanaka oishii desu. Keiki wa nakanaka oishii desu. So here, nakanaka means pretty, pretty good. Your boyfriend is quite handsome. Anata no kareshi wa nakanaka handsome desu ne. Kareshi wa nakanaka handsome desu ne. So here, nakanaka means quite. The test was more difficult than I expected. Nakanaka could also imply that something is more than what you've expected. So here, it's more difficult than you've expected. So you can say, Testo wa nakanaka muzukashikatta desu. Nakanaka in a negative sentence will mean not easily or not as expected. For example, I have trouble remembering names. Nakanaka hito no namae o remembering or to remember is oboeiru koto ga dekimasen. So, nakanaka here means have trouble or it's not easy for me. Watashi wa nakanaka hito no namae o oboeiru koto ga dekimasen. Another example, in Japan, it's not easy to dispose old computers. Nihon de wa. So I think I've mentioned this before. So if the topic of the sentence is a place, you can mark it with de wa. So usually we just mark the topic with wa. But since our topic is a place, you can say nihon de wa. In Japan, nakanaka, it's not easy. Furui pasokon wo old computers to dispose. Steru koto ga dekimasen. Nihon de wa nakanaka furui pasokon wo steru koto ga dekimasen. Another example, there aren't many organic stores in Japan. Nihon de wa organic store ga nakanaka Arimasen. Nihon de wa organic store ga nakanaka arimasen. So, as you notice, can also change the location of nakanaka. And lastly, the word zehi. So, zehi is added to a sentence to express strong desire. You can add this when you want to express that you want to do something. Or you can also use this if you want to invite someone to do something or try something out. For example, I would really like to get married in Hawaii. So here you're expressing your own desire of wanting to get married in Hawaii. You can say, Watashi wa Hawaii de zehi. So would really like. Kekkon shitai desu. Hawaii de zehi kekkon shitai desu. Another example is when you want to invite someone. For example, it's my birthday. By all means, please come to my party. Watashi no tanjoubi desu kara. Zehi, please. Party ni kite kudasai ne. Watashi no tanjoubi desu kara. O watashi no tanjoubi desu. Zehi, party ni kite kudasai ne. So it just means that 
I would really love to have you there at my party. Another is when you want to ask someone to try something out or when you are offering something to someone. Please have some of the cake. It's delicious. Cake wo zei tabete kudasai. Oishi desu yo. Cake wo zei tabete kudasai. Oishi desu yo. Or you can put zei in front and say zei cake wo tabete kudasai. Oishi desu yo. And lastly, you can also use zehi in the following situation. For example, someone asks you, Would you like to go out with me? Yes, definitely, I'd love to. So here you're very enthusiastic about the idea. So the question is, Isho ni asobi ni ikimasen ka? And you are very enthusiastic to say, Yes, yes, definitely, of course, I'd love to. So you can say, Eh, zehi. Okay, so those are the grammar points for this lesson. If you have any questions or clarifications, make sure to write them down in the comment section below. But before we end this video, let's have a quick review and speaking practice of the main grammar points that we've learned today. So we've learned how to form the dictionary form of the verb. For group 1, we just change i line to u line. For group 2, we change mas to ru. And for group 3, shimas becomes ru and kimas becomes kuru. And for other verbs that end in shimas, we just change shimas to suru. We've also learned how to express can or able to do an action or a noun. For example, watashi wa utau koto ga dekimasu. Kanji wo yomu koto ga dekimasu. Piano ga dekimasu. Unten ga dekimasu. You can also ask questions. For example, anata wa blank ga dekimasu ka? We've also learned how to express our hobbies. For example, watashi no shumi wa shashin wo toru koto desu. Eo kaku koto desu. Dance des, game des. We can also ask questions like, Anata no shumi wa nan desu ka? And lastly, we've learned the pattern before an action or a noun or a time period action. For example, Neru mai ni shawa o abimasu. Gohan taberu mai ni te o aratte kudasai. Ryokko no mai ni and to ask questions, for example, Anata wa mai ni nani wo shimasu ka? Unten suru koto ga dekimasu ka? Nani go o hanasu koto ga dekimasu ka? Anata no shumi wa nan desu ka? Neru mai ni nani wo shimasu ka? Okay, so that's it for today's lesson. If you find this video helpful, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't want to miss any of the future lessons. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye!